We're here in Clark, New Jersey, attending the Marijuana Policy Great Seminar, and I'm here with Dr. Robert Melamede. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Nice you, to be here. Uh, Robert, you are a uh, professor these days. You've moved cross-country. Where is yeah, your... Yeah, I started out at the university... Well, actually, I started out in New York Medical College, and I went to the University of Vermont, and now I'm at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. And over the years, one of your main uh, focal points has been medicine, it has been uh, the human body, our uh, human condition, if you will, and you've made quite a few determinations in regards to marijuana, the cannabinoid system, the cannabinoid and system. the human body. Yeah, tell us briefly, if you will, what you've discovered. Well, I've always been curious uh, as to what life is and what is health and what is disease. So uh, I was working with free radicals and how they damage DNA, which naturally leads into an expansion into these other things that I'm interested in because it's generally believed that age-related diseases such as autoimmune disease, cognitive dysfunction, arteriosclerosis, you know, cardiovascular disease, and uh, m many cancers in fact have free radicals as their basis. And since I was studying free radicals specifically from the point of DNA, as I learned more and expanded more, uh, it converged with my other interest, which is marijuana. Uh, being an old pothead from way back when, I started smoking when I was 16, and I've been a marijuana consumer for 42 years. As I got older, I switched from recreational to, uh, at one point, you know, being interested in the libertarian freedom aspect, which I still am interested in both of those. But now, as I've become an, somewhat of an old fart, I've also developed age-related diseases for which marijuana works. And I've been very fortunate in being able to integrate uh, the cannabis with the free radicals and my overall viewpoint as to what life is and what we're all doing here. Well, you know, a, a, a friend of ours, uh, Mr. Irv Rosenthal, very successful stockbroker down mm -hmm. in Florida, has very uh, painful muscle uh, conditions uh, where he can actually burst his own blood vessels, uh, mm -hmm. could uh, die uh, from, from that kind of a, a situation. But he says to look at him, you'd think he's just an average, pretty much an average guy. But he says it is the marijuana which keeps him from uh, degenerating further, which basically enables him to have a relatively normal life. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts are how many of us are uh, recreational users, but also medical users and just don't know it? Well, in order to really give you an answer that makes sense, I've got to explain to you some very, a very basic truth. And that is that we all make these marijuana-like compounds. They're called endocannabinoids, endo within cannabinoids, marijuana-like. And they're all actually lipid products. They're made from breakdown of different fats in our body, essential fatty acids that we take in and consume. Some of them get converted down these biochemical pathways and become our internally produced marijuana. But what's so amazing is that they literally wind up regulating every system in our body. Now, what do I mean by system? our cardiovascular system, our reproductive system, our digestive system, our endocrine system, our neurological system. Every system in our body is held in balance. We call that homeostasis. Everything, every system in our body is homeostatically regulated by endocannabinoids. So in other words, that's how we balance out opposing forces, which happens to be a fundamental quality of living systems, is that we really are a balance of opposing forces. It's like the thermostat on your wall. You know, you set it at a particular temperature, the, if it's not warm enough, the heater goes on and turns up the heat and it reaches a particular level and it goes off and then it cools again and you go up and down within that range. That's, a, that's homeostasis, that's balance. Yes. And we do that with all of our biochemistry. And part of the balancing act that's going on is whether or not you turn on reactions that lead to inflammation, free radicals, or if you turn them off. That's one of these basic balancing acts. And we need both sides. It's like you need the conservatives and the, and the liberals. Politically, you kind of have a similar thing going on biochemically. You balance those things out against one another. And it turns out, though, that we all suffer from a common imbalance because we're all getting older. Right. And what that really seems to be is the result of an accumulation of basically biochemical friction that results from free radicals changing our chemistry. And it turns out that the endocannabinoid system is how the body has evolved over the 600 million years that the cannabinoid system seems to be in place. They, they've evolved to be apparently a central player 
in how we maintain balance in, with respect to those free radicals and their negative consequences. So as we get older, we accumulate free radicals, damages from free radicals, more accurately, and they lead to these various age-related degenerative diseases. Now that we're living longer, those are the diseases that kill us. When we died from infections at 20, 40 years old, you know, we didn't have to worry about these things. But now that we're living longer, now our efforts have to focus on how do we minimize this fundamental truth of our biochemistry, that we can't avoid this biochemical friction. So essentially it turns out uh, that uh, the cannabinoids are that chosen mechanism. So in a very simple statement, free radicals are the friction of life, and your cannabinoids are the oil of life. They help to reduce the friction. 